Shabbat Shalom. In this week's Parsha, the Torah describes the construction of the Mishkan, of the tabernacle in the desert, and tells us that there were three precious metals that were used in the Mishkan, gold, silver, and bronze. And if one looks carefully at the description of the construction of the Mishkan, it's easy to note that the, the, the bronze is used predominantly in the outermost parts of the Mishkan, silver towards the middle, and then as one moves towards the center of the Mishkan, more and more gold until one is in the Holy of Holies where everything is pure gold. And it seems that the Torah is trying to indicate through the use of these precious metals which is the most important or the holiest part of the Mishkan bronze, which was the least expensive, least precious metal, uh, is, is on the outer uh, perimeter of the Mishkan and the silver as one goes towards the center, etc., to the gold, and the gold indicating the uh, holiest area, the most important, the most significant area. And while the Torah seems to use the common association of value with these metals, at the same time, I'd like to suggest that the Torah undermines our whole notion of what's value and the premise of the value of these metals in the, the architecture and the structure itself. Rabbi Bigman, in his book, Yudducha Rayonai, he notes that in uh, ancient pagan cultures, there were kruvim, there were cherubs that surrounded the central idol which was to be worshipped in the temple. And the power uh, of, of the mikdash, of the mishkan, was the absence of anything in between the two kruvim. And Rav Bigman argues that there's a very, very powerful message that Torah is giving us about who our God is as opposed to who the gods of the contemporary cultures of the Torah where they were uh, uh, material, they were embodied, and our God is transcendent and beyond. Picking up on Rav Bigman's idea, I'd like to suggest that as we move from bronze to silver to gold, at the very center of the Mishkan, in between the Kruvim, of course, there is nothing. And maybe what the Torah is trying to indicate to us is that our notion of what is valuable in the material sense, really is skewed. That the most valuable things are the things that can't be touched, the things that can't be seen. God, love, friendship, these are the most valuable things. And so the Torah, while on the one hand uses our connection to material value to indicate what is uh, holy within the Mishkan, tells us ultimately what we think is valuable may not be so valuable. Shabbat Shalom.